What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can quickly create curves that run along surfaces and follow paths that we want in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I wanted, I wanted to make this video because I'm seeing some people doing this the hard way and um, it's really a lot easier to create curves than you think inside of Blender. So a lot of the time what people do is they do a shift A, right? And then they go into curve and they add like a Bezier curve to this location, then they tab into edit mode and they start editing it and adjusting it, right? So they pick a point, you know, they rotate it a little bit along whatever axis they want, and then they start extruding, right? By tapping E to extrude in order to create a curve, which is a perfectly valid way to do this, by the way. And then you can come in here and you can edit these uh, control points, but it's a lot slower than what we really want. Right, because then you're coming in here and you're having to extrude and extrude and rotate and all of that different kind of stuff. What we wanna do instead is, let's go ahead and let's add a new curve. So I'm gonna do a Shift A, Bezier. Then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna tab into edit mode. Well, in this case, what I want you to do is I want you to tap the A key to select the whole thing, hit the X and delete all of it. So you're gonna delete your vertices right here. And the reason why is because you've got tools over here on the left hand side for drawing curves. And in this case in particular, I want to use the draw tool. And so what I want you to do instead is we're just going to jump, jump into top down mode with this pencil active. And then we're just going to click and drag like this. Well, notice how when we do this, and then we let up, this is going to draw a curve in here. Now we're not quite level with the 3D cursor where we wanna be, but we can just tap the A key and just move this up in order to align that, no big deal, right? So that's the first thing is that's a really easy way to draw curves. It's pretty much the only way that I draw curves anymore unless I need some kind of extreme precision. But there's more to it than just that. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add a curve on this surface right here. So if I was to put my 3D cursor on this surface and do a shift A to add a curve right here, and then, can tab into edit mode and I'm gonna do the same thing, right? I'm gonna tap the A key, hit X to delete the vertices. Then I'm gonna click and drag in here like this. Now, we've got a little bit of a problem though in that when I click and drag, right? It's not placing this curve on that flat surface. Now you might get a slightly better result if you go into top down mode like we did before, but um, it's not quite where we want it to be. It's coming in a little bit lower than the surface. So it's just not quite doing what we want. However, if you want this to show up on the surface, you just have to toggle the method of projecting depth to surface. Now, if I click and drag in here like this, it's going to use that surface to figure out where the depth is. Notice how this got placed directly on this surface right here. So this is somewhat valuable when you're dealing something flat, it's even more valuable when you start dealing with something like this right here, right? We've got this complex surface that's in here. And if we wanna draw a path that follows along with the surface, this method is extremely helpful. So I'm gonna do a Shift A and a Bezier curve, hit A and X in order to delete those vertices. Now make sure that you still have surface selected in here. But now if I click and drag and draw, Notice how this curve is going to follow along with this surface along the whole path that I drew. So this can be really helpful if you're trying to find something that needs to go along a surface like this, but not only will that work with a singular surface, it'll also work with something like this. So I'm gonna add a new curve, tab into edit mode, do an A, X, delete. Make sure we're still on surface and then I'm gonna click and drag in here like this. And so notice what this is gonna do is this is going to take that curve and it's going to project it along this surface right here. Now, some things about this aren't perfect, right? You might need to come in here and fix them a little bit. Like I might wanna move this off of the surface right here. So you might need to make a few adjustments, but what that's done is that's allowed us to draw a curve that follows completely along whatever we drew over top of. And then, you know, if you come in here and you want to add like a bevel or something like that, you can use this to create wires or cables or other cool things. Now, one other thing to note about this is a lot of tools are based on curves, right? Especially like new geometry nodes, assets, and things like that. And sometimes you wanna create things that are like arrays. So if I was to do a shift A to add a Bezier curve, I'm gonna tab in here and I'm gonna delete this. 
let's say I wanted to create an array along a path with the geometry node setup that I have. Well, I could start by just creating this path and it's gonna quickly create a curve that follows along that surface. Well, then that tool, which in this case is the Sanctus library tool, um, so it's built into the Sanctus library add-on, but there's a ton of geometry nodes assets. Well, now if I apply that tool to this object, And then I go into that modifier and I tell it to follow that last curve. That curve is basically telling this where to put this array object. And so this isn't about this specific tool as much as curves are very valuable for creating paths inside a blender. And so being able to place them really quickly like this can be a huge time saver. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about this, if you have other great tips for working with curves in Blender. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.